Hey, welcome back to Spellbound. I'm BJ the Book Witch, and you're watching an episode of Tabled Content. This is where we take a closer look at books and talk about bookish topics. And today, in honor of Black History Month, we're going to be talking about representation. So first of all, if you didn't know, February is Black History Month in the U.S., although it is informally recognized in Ireland, the Netherlands, and across the U.K. Now, obviously, we shouldn't have to have a Black History Month. We should be teaching Black history, which is to say American history, in our public schools and through our culture. But we don't, because we exist in a world that sees whiteness as the standard and everything else as the alternative. So until we can eradicate white supremacy from our structures, systems, and worldview, it's extremely important that we do have Black History Month and Native American History Month in November. And it's important because it promotes representation. Okay, so what is representation? Representation really is as simple as it sounds. It's when by POC or other marginalized groups are represented in books, TV shows, movies, news, and advertisements. Representation is extremely important. It's important for everyone within a group or country to be represented across these media because it shows an honest depiction of the people within that group or country. I need to like gargle. Blah. So let's say you play basketball and you belong to a sports complex or a gym. And this gym offers all kinds of sports. It offers basketball, baseball, swimming, gymnastics, and soccer. But soccer is the favorite. All the posters throughout the gym show kids playing soccer and the website for the gym only shows photos from soccer games and tickets to soccer games and soccer merchandise and the social media pages and Instagram and Facebook for the gym only shows kids playing soccer and interviews with soccer players talking about their unique struggles and their journey as soccer players. Let's look at some of the consequences of that. First, to outsiders, visitors, spectators, to them that's the soccer gym. They may not even know that other sports are offered, and they certainly wouldn't know any information on how to join, support, or watch the games. Inside the gym, the soccer players probably feel pretty special. They're well-funded because everybody knows about the sport. They have new jerseys, and they attract the best coaches, so they play really well, too. But the other sports inside the gym, they probably feel pretty ignored. They aren't featured anywhere. Their information isn't on the website. People are always surprised to find out that there are other sports offered there and even more surprised to learn that they aren't happy because they belong to such a successful gym. And this makes them feel misunderstood. But these other sports are not invisible within the gym. They interact regularly with the soccer players. And because the soccer players see them, they don't understand why they feel so frustrated. The soccer players say, what do you mean you feel invisible? You're right here. You belong to this gym, don't you? And that's the thing. They do belong to the gym, technically. And on paper, they have the same access to all of the gym's amenities. They have a team, a coach, and a place to play, but they don't receive the same funding. And they aren't featured on any of the gym's internal or external promotions, so they still feel invisible. They're intentionally being excluded. And trust me, we could take this metaphor a whole lot further. And we could talk about what would happen if the sports complex was suddenly under new management and all of the sports received equal funding and equal representation. And we could talk about how the soccer players would feel very upset by that and would lash out at that equalization. And they would say things like the other sports don't deserve equal funding because they aren't as good athletes, ignoring the fact that the unfair funding was what gave them better coaches and made them better athletes to begin with. And we could talk about how those soccer players need to learn a whole lot more about the sports complex as a whole and not just soccer to understand why things need to change. Trust me, no one enjoys a good exhaustive metaphor like I do. Why would it be important for the sports complex to represent their other sports? Besides the self-esteem boost that the other sports might feel from seeing themselves represented, it would be more accurate, right? It would be an honest depiction of that gem. And that's just one reason why representation matters in media and in books because it creates an honest portrayal of the many different peoples and cultures that make up our country and the world. If the only books that can get made are the ones that depict white people, then that's not real representation. And it creates a false sense of superiority, just like for the soccer players. And there are so many other reasons why representation is important. Reasons related to self-esteem, identity, sense of self, and feeling seen. And what that does to children and adolescents in particular, who for the most part are doing most of the reading of YA and middle grade books. But there are other reasons too that affect inclusion. If only people who look like me and have the same religious background as me and the same family structures as me and the same culture as me are the people that I see represented on TV, on the news, in movies and video games and in advertisements, 
then anyone who's not like me, I'm going to subconsciously regard as the other. Because if there's versions of me everywhere, then that must be normal. And everything else is going to be simply that. Everything else. So representation matters. Disabled and differently abled representation matters because we can't have public buildings that don't have disability access because then they aren't really for the whole public. LGBTQ representation matters because transgender individuals rarely see old age because they're murdered at such an alarming rate. Cultural representation matters because this country was founded on immigrants from other cultures and from the natives who were already here and who were all but exterminated in the founding of this country. And black representation matters because this country was founded on an idea that said that some humans weren't humans and we still haven't fully faced that truth yet. And the internal structures and systems and practices still uphold this belief system and white supremacy. And while it may not seem like a radical act or a moment of activism, reading, sharing, promoting, publishing, and creating stories that have representation really is just that. Because it's helping shift the worldview from one of a white norm or a white standard to a more inclusive one. One that represents everyone. Now before I wrap up and get to my book recommendations, I do want to mention something. A lot of what I've shared so far has to do with shaping um, what gets created and put on the market. And for the purposes of this discussion, I'm definitely talking about books. But there's a role for you to play here as a consumer as well. As you read more diverse books and books by black authors, make sure you're not only reading stories of oppression. It may be easy as we, white people, start to understand white supremacy and realize that we're only scratching the surface of how deep this runs to run out and fill our carts with books on slavery and oppression in history and black people who overcame the odds or who fought against oppression openly. Heroes like Rosa Parks and Thurgood Marshall, Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King Jr., Sojourner Truth. And please understand, I'm not saying that we shouldn't read these books. We should read these books, read all the books. But these shouldn't be the only books that we're reading on the black experience. Because if we're only reading books by black authors and about black characters through stories of oppression, then we're only learning, understanding, and identifying the black experience within that story of oppression. And we're still only seeing black folks through a context of whiteness. That's why you may hear black content creators or influencers talking about black joy, black love, and black life because a black person's experience is not defined by their struggle or their experience. And the whole purpose is to see people as individuals. So we should be reading stories by black authors and that feature black representation that show black characters as individuals outside the story of oppression that we already know. It's then that we can work together to chisel away at this worldview of white supremacy behind which we're all trapped and start to relate through our humanity. The goal here is seeing individuals as individuals even and especially when those individuals are not like you. Representation matters. Now I wanted to include a list of some books that feature black representation that are from my own TBR, but for a fuller list there are all kinds of readathons going on right now in celebration of Black History Month. Most prominently is Blackathon featured by Jesse over at Bowties and Books. On their channel they have links um, to all different pages and other content creators who are helping host this event and hosting read-alongs in all different genres like thriller and horror, sci-fi, fantasy, YA, contemporary fiction, and lit fic. And I think, think it covered it, so there should be plenty for you to find. Now, on my own TBR, in middle grade, I have Bud Not Buddy by Christopher Paul Curtis. Those are three first names. Harbor Me by Jacqueline Woodson. Ghost Boys by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Blended by Sharon M. Draper. I just read this one this month. And Hoodoo by Ronald L. Smith. I also just read this one this month, and I loved it. In Adult, I have The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. I just read this one last month. It's a romance, and it is very cute. I'm reading The Changeling by Victor Laval this month. Wife of the Gods by Koi Carte, um, and I'm also reading that this month. The Twelve Tribes of Hattie by Ayana Mathis. I read earlier this month, and it was incredible. Remembrance by Rita Woods. And The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. I'm really hoping to get to this one this month. If you've read any of these, and definitely if you have any additional suggestions, please leave a comment below. I'm really trying to diversify my library and definitely read more books by Black authors specifically. So any book recommendations, I would really love to hear it. Thanks so much for sticking around. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, hit subscribe. And of course, there's always Instagram. There's still one more week left in Black History Month. So find a great book written by a Black author and let's finish this month strong. And as always, happy reading. Thank you.